Hey guys, I just want to mention a few quick things before we start the video. First of all, this is going to be a multi-part video. So at the end of each video, the next video is going to be the recommended one in the end cards. Also down below in the description, I break out the video into different sections based on what I'm removing from the engine. So if you want instructions on specific items, you can head down there and click on the time code for the corresponding item. Also, if you need any of the tools or the parts that I use in the videos, you can head down to the description where you're gonna find links to each of the products. These are affiliate links, so it's a great way to support the channel without spending any additional money. Thanks for listening, on with the video. Now, after a series of a few incredibly unfortunate events, I now have to take off my cylinder heads. Now this is going to be a series of multiple videos, so definitely subscribe so you can kind of get the whole spectrum of what we're doing here. Now just getting to the heads is not that big of a deal. You can take off the valve cover and you can kind of work on your valve train. However, I'm actually looking to remove the entire head and that is a whole other story. Not only do we need to make a significant amount of room in the engine bay because I do not plan on taking the engine out of the engine bay, but we need to actually take off the timing chain cover and remove all of the timing because of course the cams are up in the heads. But enough talking about it, let's start taking stuff out of this engine bay to make room for our job. Now before you start any major job on a car, you wanna make sure that you have the battery fully disconnected. Not only are we gonna take out our battery, but we're actually gonna take out the tray below so we have room when we take off our valve cover and our head. So grab your eight millimeter socket and take off the negative battery cable first. Once you have that off, make sure you kind of hold it away or just keep it away from the uh, battery post and then you want to take off your positive side. Once that's free, you can kind of flip that back here just for a minute while we take the battery out. To remove the battery, you just have another eight millimeter bolt, nice long one here, loosen that and that strap should release. All right, once you finally unscrew that, the battery is going to be free for you to take out of the engine bay. Carefully set this down and we can move on. We're gonna keep going with our eight millimeter and there's just three bolts we need to remove out of the bottom of the tray and one clip that's holding the loom here onto the tray itself. Loosen those three bolts, take them out, release that loom and this whole tray should remove from the engine bay. We also have this ground cable here. So I'm just gonna unscrew this so I can move this loom a little more freely. And we'll talk about organization here in a little bit about bigger jobs. However, for these types of things, I just like to put this back in here and I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and wrap it around here so that way I don't have to worry about organizing a single bolt. Excellent. So now I know exactly what this bolt is, where it needs to go because it can only really reach one place. And then I can just take this whole thing and kind of shove it to the side here, being relatively careful. And now when I take off my valve cover on the passenger side, I'm not gonna hit that battery tray. Now my engine compartment is pretty darn clean. I've only owned this car a few weeks, so I haven't really had a chance to completely destroy it. However, this is a good time when you go through and you take these parts off to come back and kind of clean everything out. So you can really do that when you start to reassemble, that's fine, but either way, just take this time to go back through and clean everything up. All right, let's move on to the air intake. Now removing all of this is pretty simple. Uh, really, we just need our, uh, our fingers and a flathead screwdriver. So we're gonna start by removing just two clips here on the back of the air box. You just kind of push towards the center and that just pops out. And then you just push this this way here to kind of release it from these arms here. There you go. So that's a way. Then we wanna take our, uh, I think this, this is probably a mass airflow sensor. Uh, we wanna pull this little red piece out and then push down and that will remove. Easy as that. Then the connection going into the throttle body, we just have this uh, looks like PCV. This one will have a little green tab at the bottom. You wanna push that in towards the motor and then just pull that away. Simple as that. And then take your flathead screwdriver, loosen this clamp, set that aside and just kind of gently rock this back and forth. Not too much pressure on this. Make sure this is loose. All right. There we go. Awesome. So just kind of rock that back and forth until it comes off. This whole piece will come off as a single piece. Set that aside and we can keep going. Next, I want to remove the air box. 
We do that by simply taking out the air filter and then taking our 10 millimeter ratchet and removing the bolt that's against the fender. Once you remove that, there's just two little guide pins that slide into these holes. Just lift straight away, set that aside, and we can keep going. Next, we're gonna remove our throttle body. We have our throttle position sensor and our electronic control. So we wanna just slide these little red pieces back. They're normally like this, kind of pushed forward. Just pull them back, and then push your finger underneath them, and that'll just pop right out. Same story over here. Push back on the red, push down, and that will pop right off. Next, we have two bolts on top and two nuts down below. These are again going to be at eight millimeter, so just remove them, and when you put them back in, make sure you put them in at 89 inch pounds. Inch pounds, as in not foot pounds. Make sure you're not doing foot pounds, please. So, I'm gonna remove top left, bottom right, and then do the opposite. Also, uh, it looks like the nuts on the bottom are actually 10 millimeter, so it's eight up top and 10 down below. When you're on your last one, make sure that you're supporting the weight with one hand so it doesn't just fall down into the engine bay. All right, very slowly slide it off of those studs down below. Grab your gasket here, and then very gently set this aside. Now that we're getting to the point of taking out multiple nuts and bolts as a set, I wanna suggest that you take a baggie, mark what it is that you took out, put it in the bag, and that way all of your nuts and bolts are organized per part of the vehicle that you're working on. This way when you go to reassemble, not only you're not gonna end up missing any nuts and bolts, but you're gonna ensure that every nut and bolt that you use is the correct one for that part of the vehicle. For items like this, this is the passenger side PCV. Uh, I literally just took a little piece of tape, wrapped it around, and then wrote my little note on it, so that way I know exactly where it goes when we go to reassemble. This type of stuff is particularly handy if you're gonna have a multi-day or possibly even a multi-week job. Next, I wanna get into the driver's side PCV. So again, that's gonna be these green tabs. So we just kinda of push on these green tabs and then lift up. Excellent. Same on the intake side. And then great, set that aside. And now I'm going to remove the coil packs on both the driver and passenger side. These are simply a seven millimeter bolt and one electrical connector per cylinder. So let's take out the bolt. Once that bolt is out, you can just press down on the connector. It pops right off. And then grab the whole assembly and just pull it off the spark plug. Just repeat that process three more times on this side and then four on the passenger side. Next, we have the power for each of our fuel injectors. So again, we're on the driver's side. We just wanna pinch this little clip here, slide it off. Of course, do it down each one and then just repeat that same process on the passenger side. Next, we're gonna remove our drive belt. Now, it has a simple tensioner down here where you can put in the head of a ratchet, push it down, and then it will release tension on that belt. However, before you do that, you wanna loosen the bolts on the pulley for the water pump. We wanna do this because it currently has tension on this pulley, so we don't have to worry about doing any counter action when we're trying to take these bolts off and there's no belt. So grab your 10 millimeter and just kind of break these loose. All right. While there's tension on here, you don't want to back these all the way out, of course. Just break them loose so you don't have to when the belt's off. Next, you want to take a half inch ratchet. You'll see that if you push down, you can release tension on the belt. So I just put the ratchet further down, push down on this, and you can pull it right off of one of the pulleys then gently release the pressure from the tensioner pulley and your belt is loose. Once that's done, pull your ratchet out and then you can just unwind the belt from the pulleys. If you plan on reusing your belt, just be careful taking it out. Excellent, here we go. Just take it out and set it aside. That's just about gonna do it for this video. It is about 200 degrees in this garage and I'd really like to go get a beer. So, we already have a whole lot of extra space in the engine compartment. I can see us getting to the intake manifold in the next video, possibly the valve covers, and then start taking off that timing cover. Part two of this video, once it's complete, will be in the end screen of this video you're watching right now. Be sure to subscribe so you can follow along with this project. 
Like the video if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.